Hi everyone, welcome to our poster session. I'm Bing Hongchen from Georgia Tech. Today I'm going to present our paper, RetroStar, Learning Retrosynthetic Planning with Neural Guided ASTAR Search. This is joint work with Cheng Tao Li, Han Jindai, and Li Song. Before we start, I want to give you an overview of our paper and this talk. Our paper proposes the optimal retrosynthetic planning problem and an A-star-like algorithm which learns from planning experience as the solution, with state-of-the-art performance on a real-world benchmark dataset. This video will be organized as follows. First, we will briefly introduce the problem background on retrosynthesis, and then we'll present our method RetroStar. And finally, we'll provide some experimental evidence to empirically demonstrate the effectiveness of RetroStar. Molecule retrosynthesis is a fundamental problem in chemistry, drug discovery, and material science. Given a target molecule, the task is to figure out a series of reactions that lead to the synthesis of the molecule from a set of building blocks. For example, in a, the molecule in a green box at the bottom right corner is the target molecule we want to synthesize, and the molecules in the blue boxes are the building block molecules which are already available at the beginning. To synthesize the target molecule, we can first produce some intermediate compounds using chemical reactions from the building blocks. And then finally, with these in intermediate compounds, we are able to arrive at the target molecule. This problem is challenging because it involves planning in a combinatorial search space. To solve this problem, we usually decompose it into two sub-problems, which is one-step retrosynthesis and multi-step retrosynthetic planning. One-step retrosynthesis is the reverse problem of chemical reaction prediction. Given the product molecule, the task is to predict the reactants, which are precursors for synthesizing the product. In our paper, we will assume such model is known and we will denote it with B, which is a mapping from the target molecule to K candidate reactions, each with the predicted reactants and the predicted cost. With the chemical reaction space defined by the one-step model B, we're able to convert the retrosynthesis problem into a multi-step planning problem, where the actions must be chosen from the reaction candidates produced by the one-step model. Previous works leverage planning algorithms such as Monte Carlo tree search and proof number search to tackle this problem. However, there could be multiple solutions and it will be very hard to tell which ones are better. Motivated by this, we want to take the solution quality into account when we try to formulate this planning problem. There could be many criteria for a better route. It could be shorter with higher use, or it could be more chemically sound, or you name it. In our paper, we assume that whatever criteria we're using, it can be summarized in the predicted cost value of the reactions. The optimal retrosynthetic planning problem is defined as follows. Given the target molecule T, a set of building block molecules M, and a one-step model B, the optimal planning problem is trying to minimize the sum of costs of all the reactions from R1 to RK, where R1 to RK is a series of possible reactions predicted with B that start with molecules in M and ultimately lead to the synthesis of T. Note that here we also consider the practical time constraint here, which is the number of calls to the one-step model B should be limited. To tackle the optimal retrosynthetic planning problem, we propose RetroStar with three main contributions. Firstly, we are the first algorithm to incorporate learning to plan techniques for retrosynthetic planning. Secondly, RetroStar is able to achieve state-of-the-art performance on a real-world benchmark dataset outperforming other baselines by a large margin. Thirdly, the algorithm framework proposed is able to induce a search algorithm that guarantees finding the optimal solution. RetroStar is based on the NO2 representation for the search space. With this type of representation, we're able to explicitly model the relationships between the molecules and the reactions. This is because each molecule can be synthesized using any one of its children reactions. And each reaction requires all of its children reactants to be ready, to be synthesizable. In this example, 
there are two possible ways to synthesize molecule N, which is through reaction P and through reaction Q. The reaction, reactants of P are C and D, and the reactant of Q is F. With this type of representation, we are able to tell whether the root node, which is the target molecule, is synthesizable by just looking at the tree. RetroStar is a best first search algorithm based on the annual tree representation, which iteratively expands a frontier node using a one-step model until a solution has been found. The key idea of RetroStar is to prioritize the synthesis of the molecules in the current best plan. To do so, for each molecule node M, we define a value function VTM given capital T, which means under the current search tree capital T, the cost of the current best plan containing M for synthesizing the target T. This is a very good indicator for determining whether a frontier node is promising for expansion or not. In each step of RetroStar, we first select a frontier node with the best VTM given T. Then we expand the selected node using the one-step model into a two-level subtree, where in the first level, there are up to k reaction candidates returned by the one-step model. And then under each reaction candidate, there are the corresponding reactants. In the end of each step, we then backpropagated the values from the newly expanded subtree to related nodes to maintain the computation of VTM given capital T. Next, we will talk about how to compute VTM given T efficiently. With the special structure of NO3, we can decompose VTM given T into simpler components in a recursive fashion. And with this decomposition, we can then compute its value efficiently by tree-structured dynamic programming. First, we consider the boundary case, which is synthesizing a frontier node with itself. In this special case, the target molecule happens to be the molecule M itself. And since this is a frontier node, there will be no subtree rooted at this node. Therefore, the search tree here will be the empty set. In this slide, we'll assume that this value is known and we'll denote it with simply with vm. Later on, vm can be set a fixed value or it can be learned from a planning dataset. Next, we define a reaction number to be the minimum estimated cost needed for a molecule or a reaction to happen in the current tree. This reaction number will serve as an intermediate value for computing vtm given t. With the definition, we can come up with two recursive formulas for computing the reaction numbers using dynamic programming. For each reaction, the reaction number will be its the sum of its value and the reaction number of all the reactants. And then for each molecule, the reaction number will be Vm if M belongs to the frontier node set or the minimum reaction number of all its children react reactions. Once we have all the reaction numbers, we can compute VTM given T by summing over the cost of all the ancestor reactions and the, the reaction number of all the sibling molecules in all levels of the search tree. Here we provide two examples for computing the reaction number and the value function. According to the recursive rule for reaction numbers, in this figure, the reaction number for the target molecule T is the minimum of the reaction number of P and the reaction number of Q. And then the reaction number of Q is the sum of the cost of Q and the reaction number of all its reactants, which is VD plus VE. And then to compute the value for a frontier node F, we sum over the cost of all its ancestor reactions, which is CP plus CR, and then the sibling molecule, the reaction numbers for the sibling molecules, which is VA plus VC plus VF plus VK. If you're familiar with A star algorithm, you will recognize that the first part, which is CP plus CR, actually correspond 
to the G function in the A star algorithm, which means the minimum distance within the current search tree. And then the second part corresponds to the H function, which means the future estimated cost to go. Therefore, our VT M given T shares exactly the same form as the A star algorithm. Therefore, it also enjoys the admissibility property of A star algorithm, which means that uh, this algorithm guarantees finding an optimal solution if Vm is a lower bound. Note that zero would be a lower bound of Vm for any molecule M if the cost of a reaction is defined to be the negative log probability of this reaction, which is used later in our experiment. We've talked about how to plan with Vm. Next, we'll discuss how to learn Vm from collective planning data. Each data tuple in our training set contains the target molecule Mi, the best synthesis cost Vi, the expert reaction Ri, and the one-step retrosynthesis candidates Bmi. This training set can be either extracted from existing synthesis recipes in chemistry literatures, or by running a non-learned version of RetroStar on a set of target molecules. The best synthesis cost Vi is computed by summing over all the costs of the reactions in the synthesis recipe. There are two parts in the training objective. The first part is a regression loss, which is trying to fit the value of Vmi to the ground truth Vi. The second part is the consistency loss, which tries to maintain the partial order relationship between the best one-step solution Ri and other solutions in Bmi. Here, epsilon is a positive constant margin to ensure that Ri has higher priority for expansion than its alternatives, even if the value estimates have some tolerable noise. And the total objective is like this, where a hyperparameter lambda is used to balance the two loss. We set lambda to be 1 by default. To create a retrosynthesis dataset, we use reactions in USPTO to build a knowledge graph from which we extract synthesis routes and split them into training, validation, and test set. The available molecule list is obtained from the eMolecule database. Furthermore, the training reactions are used to train the one-step model B, which is used in RetroStar and all the other baselines. We compare RetroStar with greedy DFS, which prioritizes the reaction with the like highest likelihood, and with MCTS, which is Monte Carlo Tree Search, and with DFPNE, which is a variant of proof number search. Both MCTS and DFPNE are two popular methods for retrosynthetic planning proposed in recent years. And we also include RetroStar 0, which is an ablation study obtained by setting Vm to a lower bound 0. This is the not learned version of RetroStar. To evaluate the algorithms, we measure both the time, which is measured by the number of cores to the one-step model, and the solution quality, which is measured by the total cost of the reactions. So here are our experimental results. In terms of the success rate, both RetroStar and RetroStar 0 outperform all the baselines by a large margin. And we can see that the learned version RetroStar is doing better than the not learned version RetroStar 0. And then in terms of the solution quality, on the right hand side of this bar chart, we can clearly see the benefits of using our algorithm. Here we show the sample solution from RetroStar. The solution shares the same right branch as the expert solution but requires three less steps to synthesize the molecule in a box. It is possible to extend this work to polymer retrosynthesis or to other domains such as theorem proving. Please shoot me an email if you are interested. Thank you for listening. For more details, please refer to our paper, full slides and poster. Thank you.